Okay. Welcome to live shows, right? All right. So here are some rules to the game. Okay. And then we're going to get to the pre-market game plan. That's why I'm rushing everything right now. So no questions in the first hour of trading. Okay. So when I'm trading, I'm trading, I'm not answering questions. I'm not doing anything else, but I'm, I'm super focused on making money. That's the purpose of the room. Uh, we don't teach in our room. We make money in our room. So my primary focus is to make money and then share the setups that I'm taking with my uh, with my students, with my members. We will allocate at the end of the trading session ample time for Q&A. So if you should have any questions, I'm open to answering any type of question. I'm an open book. You can ask me anything, but at the end of the session. So when you hear that we're out of the trades or if you hear me, hey, today we're not going to be taking the trade, that's the time you can boom, bombard me with questions. All right, small size accounts can participate in trading as well. You guys can use micros and obviously position size. Uh, position sizing is key, uh, typically one to 2% uh, for traders. I do uh, recommend, and this is what I do for my account. Uh, I do tend to, uh, based on price action, so I will be noting this in the room, um, because each trade is different. If you have a high velocity trade and if you see that your index or commodity is reaching target one, then you're pretty much going to leave uh, the trade on, right? Because you're seeing a price advancement. You don't want to see yourself taken out of the trade, right? So you're going to stay in. But typically uh, on any kind of trade in a difficult market environment, I scale out of trades. I take out half a position at target one. I try to raise my stop as soon as possible to break even. At target two, I scale a quarter and I'm left with a quarter for trailing. All right. So for example, in the trading room, you're going to see me type and I'm going to be try typing the symbol. So when I call a trade, I'm going to be typing, for example, the symbol. So let's say we're looking at the M&E S&P. So I'm, you're going to see ES and then the direction. Long, um, for long, I'm going to put L. For short, I'm going to put S. And then I'm going to put the exact parameter. So I'm not going to wing it. And if, if I say, for example, 4507, that is the entry price for everybody. You shouldn't get it at 04. You shouldn't get it at 03. You shouldn't get it at 05, right? You get it at the exact price that I tell you to. And same with the stop. And if I, if you hear me say, we're going to put the stop a little bit below, it means that we're going to be giving, let's say, for two to three point wiggle room below the stop. And I'm going to point out the stop precisely. And exactly, the targets are going to follow TGT. Uh, it is a shortcut for the targets that I'm going to be using in the trading room. And uh, you guys are going to see uh, the exact prices for those as well. All right. So please be on time. Don't be late. Remember, all the trades are posted in the room. You can scroll up and you're going to see the trades uh, posted in there. All right. All right. So let's get started. What to expect. OK, so pre-market game plan. We're going to be starting right away uh, in about two minutes. Uh, we're going to do the pre-market game plan for NASDAQ. Uh, we're going to do it for uh, M&E S&P. We're going to do it for the Dow, for Russell, gold and oil. That's it for today. And during these three days, uh, we're going to analyze the current market context, the current market conditions. We already have some levels already pre uh, uh, preset. These are institutional levels. We don't have trigger points that are uh, right off the open. We do have some uh, bullish points and some bearish points on the chart. The price action currently is trading uh, quite far away from those levels. Uh, we're going to go over news in just a second, economic releases that are highly to impact the uh, transition of price throughout the morning. And we're also going to take a quick look at earnings. And this morning, I mean, we're, it's going to be a shortcut. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Um, the most, um, let's say, impactful uh, stocks that have reported today, number one was L.A. Lilly that reported earnings. L.A. Lilly is up and UPS uh, is down. Okay. So we have, you know, quite a, quite a balance, right? Uh, we're going to then switch. So after this, you're not going to hear me talk nonstop on the mic because this is not a show. This is trading. Okay. So I am going to talk only when there's a reason to talk when I see a setup. I'm also going to be commenting the market environment for the indices as I see a uh, fit for the trading session. We're going to try to identify high 
trading opportunities. High, um, you know, I would say the the best trading opportunities for the day, if there should be any. We're seeing the market that is definitely under pressure right now. Uh, then we're going to be waiting for a trade. OK, so we wait for the trade. We don't jump in. We don't jump out. We're waiting. Everything is super well technically calculated. Uh, we're going to be determining the executional pattern. I'm going to be mentioning the strategy that we're going to be using. And of course, the parameters of the trade. Everything is going to be in this live market context. And at the same time, I'm going to be trading on my account. And I'm going to be also posting in the trading room. All right, so we focus on momentum. So this is our style. We focus on momentum in the first uh, five to 15 minutes. Uh, we focus on continuation patterns, uh, trend trading, counter trend trading, and swing trading, and there should be any opportunities. So how the trades would be called, all trades will be called out loud. So listen to my voice. If you can follow directions, you're going to do really great. If you don't have a track record, a track performance that is outstanding, that provides you with consistency, don't take any trades outside of the trading room. Just take the trades that I post. I highly recommend because you're new to the program right here. I don't know your level of experience. I do recommend use these day, these three days to sit back. Perhaps don't take any trades if you're very new at trading and see what we're doing and how we're uh, how we're uh, trading. All right, if it's a momentum trade, so this is very important. You're not going to see me type it in the room because I won't have time to type it in the room, take the trade on my side, read the parameters, calculate the stop and doing all that stuff. So you will hear me on the mic. These are rare occasions where we have these momentum opportunities into the market. All right, here are the earnings for today. This morning, like I mentioned, we have uh, UPS and LLL that reported earnings. UPS is down, LLL is up. Uh, and uh, Zoetis as well reported. Zoetis, by the way, is, uh, um, is the animal side from Pfizer, if you didn't know that. Uh, and then after the close today, we have AMC and Twilio. Rivian uh, that it will be reporting earnings and you're going to say like, oh, wow, what are we looking at stock earnings because this is a futures trading room? Well, because these futures um, um, or these uh, these uh, stocks will impact the futures uh, trajectory uh, from the open and definitely uh, after the close. So they may impact the overnight tra uh, transition of price. For example, on Wednesday, we have Disney after the close, right? So we will be discussing uh, before the market opens on Thursday, the activity from Disney Plus. We have Alibaba that we'll be reporting on Thursday. That's going to have, again, a pretty high impact for the market. Economic releases are very important to us because they uh, show us the transition of price and they tell us when to send our hands and when to uh, trade. I do not trade uh, any kind of uh, release. Uh, I trade the reaction from the news release i don't trade news uh if i want to gamble i just go to vegas i don't i'm not gambling with my money so this is where this is what got me to where i am right now because i'm not gambling i'm not just i love my money and money loves me back and if you love your money you want to make sure that you get in a really high caliber trades and you don't wing it into the market because the moment you try to wing it the moment you're that moment you're gonna get hit so welcome everybody today's tuesday so we're gonna have uh we're gonna have u.s whole uh, sale inventories at 10 o'clock now this is going to pretty much impact the market a little bit even though it's not going to be a high impact release it's coming into an inflection time it's coming at 10 o'clock where you're going to see a reaction it's a reactionary time into the market so typically if the price flip for example goes up from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, you're going to notice a stall. If we happen to take a trade from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, we're going to try to, uh, um, you know, trail super tight, okay? Trail super tight. All right, so this is, uh, you know, this is what uh, that little bit of intro that I prepared for you guys. And now we're going to go exactly to the screen. Uh, hold on just one second. Uh, let's just uh, go exactly to this screen right here. And we're going to start our pre-market game plan. All right. So, okay, here's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with YM. Okay. So why not start with YM? Just hold on, bear with me just a second. All right. So we're going to start with YM. Cool. Uh, so the 
what I do, you you guys can see four charts here, right? This is the hourly chart. This is the daily chart. This is the weekly chart. And this is the monthly chart. I look at the context to see uh, what the, uh, you know, pretty much what the uh, idea is behind today. So what kind of trading environment we're going to be heading into today, right? So I'm looking at the macro level to have an idea how the micro level will be uh, moving. Why? Because all of these smaller time frames are getting their directional bias from these guys right here, from the hourly charts, daily charts, weekly charts, and monthly charts. So you guys can see I have like monthly chart, right? So can somebody tell me right here what is the directional bias for um for YM, for example? What it what what kind of trend, what kind of trend are we in in YM? When you when you look at it and you see higher highs, higher lows, all that chunky up right so we're in a massive bull market right you guys see here that i have some these are uh projections because this connects the high and the low to give us further targets to the upside in case the price goes higher and you can see here that we have been consolidating a lot into the 50 percent retracement which is not a fib number it's just 50 percent from this high low and we have been literally grinding up a lot into that 50%. You can see here like a whole base here. And the Dow was the one that really took its time facing. The NASDAQ was running. S&P was running. But not the Dow. The Dow was just so sluggish. Now, let me tell you a secret. Seasonally speaking, the Dow performs better in the month of August than the other indices. Russell has a tendency to underperform. Uh, the S&P has a tendency to underperform. Uh, NASDAQ has a tendency to uh, underperform, but not the Dow. Dow has a tendency to perform. And one of the reasons is because it's still under the impact of earnings. We have pretty good earnings from uh, Caterpillar. We had good earnings from Eli Lilly today, right? So you can see that this is the one index that has not made a new low and it's just so uh, it's just holding the support. All right, so let's get to it. So basically what you can see here, this is a little skinny candle that we have just started for about a week. And this is one week of trading activity. Uh, and now this is very important. This is a weekly, uh, the weekly chart. So by Friday's activity, we dove lower into it. But if you can see here, this dive lower came right into these highs, right? So these highs right now represent a great deal of support. I'm going to change my cursor here. Okay. So you can see here that this is, all right, this is right here, a, 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 a massive level of support, right? So all the way to about 35,000, this is, again, a massive level of support. So we can still dive about 300 points, and we can still be very, very bullish from the weekly chart. Now, the daily chart. The daily chart is pretty evident based on price action. We're going to be bullish over. Uh, you can see here that we already have um, an institutional level. This is going to be bullish above. No questions asked. Any type of strategy can be implemented right above this purple line. So above, I would say the approximate number would be 600, just a little bit around the 600 level. So 35,589 is going to be the level that we're going to be interested in. This is going to be bullish above. Now, as you can see here from the 1H chart, we're trading in a range, right? So we have highs from yesterday's trading session. We have lows from yesterday's trading session. And we're kind of like zooming out, right? So what that means is that we, we started with a shallower range, but then we went into like really expanded kind of range. So you're going to see a lot of fluctuation, a lot of volatility when this happens. Uh, stops are going to be a little bit wider. So position sizing is going to be imperative to the success of the trade. Uh, so at this point, we are into a level of support into the 270 level. So as you can see, we had one, two, three, four, five, about five hours of consistent sell into the market right ahead of the open. We're going to be opening in about five, seven, seven to eight minutes. So the problem is that we're trading in the core of the range. Any kind of trade that is developing and any kind of setup that is developing a core of the trade between resistance and between support, so it's trading right here in the middle, just like, uh, just like the Dow, does not have many chances of success, does not. So it puts it into a 50-50 type of scenario. So that means you have 50% chances of winning in this trade, 
but you have 50% chances of stopping out of the trade. So that means that it doesn't qualify as a high odds trade. We may not take it, okay, if it continues to trade in the core right here. But obviously, we're going to shift to smaller time frames where we have other guides. But again, this is one aspect from the doubt. We're trading in between resistance, possible breakout, and support. All right. So on a rating, let's say, let's on a rating from one to five, right? Let's give it like stars on a rating from one to five. This is like a two and a half star uh, type of trade right here. Now we're going to switch to EFs. Okay, now this is the m and &E SMP. The m and &E SMP, you can see here very clearly, it, had, it has an expansion, it has a peekaboo high. It just wanted to determine whether we have other buyers into this area. Now, one thing that I'm observing is that we have the pressure from the 200 simple moving average. That is selling pressure. So it's coming in, right? So notice that the high, lower high, lower high, lower high. So it's getting a little bit more of a selling pressure than anything else. But at the same time, we're noticing something that is uh, that is very interesting. And we have a bounce of support. We have a doji. We ha don't have a double bottom confirmation because the, for the double bottom, we need to see a little bit higher. So we still don't have a double double bottom. OK, so what that means is that it's not far from where the Dow is trading, but the Dow is somewhere in the middle. We're seeing the selling pressure from the moving averages. But at the same time, what are we seeing right here? A possible sandwich to the downside. But this sandwich to the downside, guys, it's so tricky. I don't know. I have here some, let's see. Let's move it over here. All right. So you guys can see here, we have this support. Let's uh, just give me one second here. Okay. So we have, all right, here we go. We have this whole resistance level, right? This resistance. I need a little bit of more room so we can move my mouse here. All right. And these two tops are creating the current support. This is called minor support. This is more likely to hold because it's in an uptrend, right? So it shows the uptrend. Once we break below this support, then we can start sliding lower and we're going to be bearish. Okay. So that doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to have a trade. So if we start breaking below these lows right here, uh, then so a breaching close to 4490, that's where we want to see a setup for the short side. As long as it's holding into the 45 key level, which is psychological, which is minor support, right? Because it's coming from two prior highs right here. This is still into an uptrend. So we can't talk about a downtrend, right? So um, we're going to cautiously look for a bounce off of this area, right? On a scale from one to five, I would give this a three, three and a half. Probably we're going to be looking either for a bounce off of this level, off the open, or a break uh, under that 44.90 in which we are going to be uh, to be bearish. Let's go to NASDAQ. NASDAQ has been uh, a week weekend, week, weakening, right? We're seeing the same type of minor support onto the daily. Here we go. And um, all right, here we go, right? And you can see here we have the resistance. We have resistance. We have the double top formation. We expanded higher. And now we're basically, you know, kind of like, this is a zigzag that has been going up, but we're weakening into support. So we can have two, we have two options over here. You can see here that we have a bullish above option, which is over 500. So if throughout the training session today or tomorrow, we may be going to that 500 level, we're going to be bullish above. In, uh, and in case we are going to navigate lower, this the the, uh, the uh, 15,250 is going to be the line in the sand that may promote lower price action. And we're going into the 15,000, which is the prior low. So we have that, um, let's say uh, we have that um, tradable void to the downside, okay? So on a scale from one to five, okay, I'm going to give this a three-star rating. So this is not very encouraging for the open uh, and definitely not encouraging, you know, for uh, for an open house because it's, it's going to be very choppy. But I think that the mastery comes, you know, when you have really hard trading environment. 
Okay. All right. So we're going to be bullish above this level. We're going to be bearish below this level. Nothing in the meantime, but we're going to be looking at some possible scalps. Um, scalps are a little bit more delicate to call in the room because they come really quickly. So this is something that you can, you know, pretty much do on your own. All right. So we do have some resistance. This is Russell right here. Russell is weakening. We have one, two, three, four, five, six days right now uh, down. We breached the 50. We have room to go into the 30. This is something that we discussed yesterday in the trading room. So if it breaks 50, it goes to 30, right? So this is pretty obvious from, uh, from breaking of this uh, support. So breaking of the 50 can take it back into the 30, which is this prior pivot low. We're already getting very, very close to the 10 EMA. So if we break below 30, we have a possibility of continuing lower into, let's say, the 2021 or so. Pay, pay very close attention because we're already trading into a projection level right here, the 38%. So into this 50-ish uh, level, if we find that the price action is going to rotate back up into the 50, then we will see. Uh, then we will see some uh, some kind of uh, action, let's say, to the upside. So Russell is still very clunky right now. Market has opened. Let me just shut off my mic because other than that, you're going to be like bombarded by all these alerts that I have because I do trade a lot of stocks as well. And that's from uh, from the swing side of stocks. All right, let's get it into oil. And we'll do, we'll do oil and gold, and then we're going to start focusing. Like I said, take it a little bit easier this morning because it's just so difficult. It's kind of like a chunky price action, which is not very favorable at this moment from the open. All right. So uh, at this point, uh, we're seeing oil. Oil is back down into the 10 EMA. 10 EMA has been the reactionary. By the way, this is the daily chart. The 10 EMA has been very reactionary uh, for, you know, and I would say for a good amount of time. Uh, and that would be like uh, July, right? So we're probably going to notice some kind of reaction right here. Uh, from the weekly perspective, we need to trade above uh, $83.25 in order to start initiating higher. At this point in time, the price action is digesting this prior high. And GC, at this point, not a fan of gold right off the open, but gold uh, just coming in a little bit is trading right on support into the 50s. We'll see when it hits 50. And if it hits 50, it could potentially be a short under 53 Although it has the minor support here, like I said, the patterns are not very favorable. All right. So then we can uh, slide a little bit lower. OK. All right, guys. So uh, as of right now, I'm going to switch the chart to my watch list. Keep in mind, we have a huge number of traders in the room. We have over a thousand traders and um, just want to make sure everybody is on the same page. If you logged in later today okay here we go all right okay if you logged in later today then um okay um let me just get ready get my screen ready here right Cool. Okay, now start sliding lower. This is the first five minutes. All right, so uh, I was uh, wanting to mention if you guys have logged in late, I do not take any questions in the first hour. More than happy to answer every single question in this room, in fact, I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to go anywhere until all your questions are uh, answered, all of them. Okay. So pretty much right now we're, you know, waiting for a trade. These are five minute charts. All right, so what I'm noticing here in the Dow that is still holding support. All right. 
Uh, here's the thing with the Dow. If the Dow starts breaking to 60, it may go, it has tradable void to 200, so it may start going to 200. <clears throat> All right. We're going to be waiting for these five minute candles to wrap up. Uh, the Dow may enter a counter trend. Uh, Dow is showing signs of a little bit more strength. We got the wing down and Russell. Dow trying to hold S&P. So and so S&P still held by the 4,500. The double bottom support is at 93.75. We could have reversal patterns if the if S and P's breaking forty five twelve. So I'm just gonna put an alert. It's not a trade. It's just um, it's just an alert. So if you see it above this area, it may start moving higher. For the low side. So remember, 10 o'clock is the time when we're getting some news and things may uh, things may change, right? Uh, we're noticing NASDAQ holding. This is very interesting. NASDAQ seems to be holding. NASDAQ has New York session resistance at 383. And it also has resistance at 380, 380 to 383. I'm just putting an alert. If we start trading above 80, we could go for a squeeze higher. And in fact, I think we will. Okay, now stock. Okay, I'm going to release one trade and this is going to be NASDAQ long. Do not take it ahead of time. Do not take it ahead of time. The entry is 382. The stop is going to be 349. And we're going to go for targets of 400 and 410 if parameters are met. Okay, if parameters are met. If not, the trade is going to be canceled. If the trade is going to hit the stop before the trigger, automatically the trade gets canceled. NASDAQ is trying to hold a little bit here. All right, the rest of the indices are sliding. The day is still young. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, can't <clears throat> excuse me, cancel Nasdaq. Cancel Nasdaq. It took out that 49. Uh Nasdaq has support to 336 right now. So all right. I'm curious to see how these indices are gonna perform. Um because we're we're literally this is the chop fest today so basically we're on into support in the dow we're into support here into the s p and we're holding this prior low from the overnight 
uh, we're holding so far this support right here. NASDAQ is sliding a little bit more. All right, I wanna have, a, let's say a short, but we don't have really good levels for shorts right now. Uh, all right, so the S&P is really fast approaching the whole number. And we have an intraday support at 4,500, exactly an ES. So I'm not going to go in long or short here. I'm just going to wait to see how it trades. So as you guys can see, I look for synchronicity, divergency throughout the charts. We're going to talk more about this uh tomorrow morning i did a little bit of intro today so get you guys up to speed on what we're doing here at trade out loud but definitely nasdaq is under pressure it has it's down 120 points um 0.79 percent we're down 33.072 percent in smp and why we're down 300 points 0.84 percent at this point and in russell we're down 31 points 1.61 percent so you can see here this is the uh most declined index as of this morning and we're getting a chunky action here in gc which is pretty much expected off of the support um oil is just chop chop uh at this moment yeah, it has a lot of resistance into the 81. Shorts are not going to be, uh, longs are not going to be that favorable. All right. All right, S&P, like I said, uh, you know, they're, they're holding these levels because they're still into support. So now we want to know if these levels are going to be, you know, tested or uh, is this the bottom? Let's say I'm looking at time sequences, like, for example, uh, uh, from 930 to 945. So I look at chunks of timings with patterns. So if the, let's say, if we have some kind of strength uh, from 9.30 uh, to 9.45, I'm going to be looking probably to get um, a scalp into the long side. But if the price action is weak within these 15 minutes, maybe some short potential. But we want to make sure that we break, uh, we break or we trade just below support. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm I'm using some moving averages right here. I'm using the 200 simple moving average. I'm using the 50 simple moving average, the 20 simple moving average, and the uh, 10 exponential moving average. We're seeing some hold here in the pattern. Okay. All right, so let's see. This is going to be the line in the sand here right now. This 380 still the line in the sand. We have the support here. We don't know if we're going to bounce off of the support or if we're going to hold the support and hold the support or if we're going to break down. So this is the moment of truth. Typically, if I see support, I like to see a setup that forms below the support, right? So that would prove that the price action is ready to go lower all right we're seeing another leg down in russell right so russell is getting weaker but it's fast approaching this level of support right here okay so i'm just uh walking you guys through out loud
All right, let's see why. Um, see, it's a tough call here because they're still holding on to these support levels. So I had that light from the camera. I was like, wow, <laughs> I can't see anymore. Okay. Um, the Dow is looking to fall off the cliff here under 240. But the question is, will it? Because it has room to 200. Yeah, let's do it. Why I'm short. 240 for the short. Oh, 240 in the stop. We're going to use a 300. Okay, it's trading at 244. I'm putting my order right now because I was typing in the room. 240 is the short. The stop is going to be 300. We're, we're discussing targets, but overall target is going to be into the 200 first target. And then if it reaches that 200, in fact, it does have another target into the 180 which is a pivot target too. That would be like 180. And then we'll decide from there if it wants to take on lower. Okay, order order filled on my side. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to be taking partial profits at 200 just because between 180 and 200, we have a thick layer of support. All right. And... Um, what I'm seeing is that we don't have a great deal of velocity to the downside and s and is kind of stopping here, just putting it's into that 30 level uh, support. So and it's going to slow down. We're back to break even. And just so you know, you guys, if you're posing any questions, I will be addressing every single question when we're done with trading. I promise you guys, if you have any questions, I'm an open book. Ask me anything. Okay. All right. So far, we had a high of this candle right here um, into the 250, it's uh, 947. Yeah, this is a reversal time. Uh, ideally, we don't want the price going above 60 right now. So uh, I think that as we're moving a little bit lower, we will be um, tightening our stops a little bit. Come on. Okay, we have a brand new low in the Dow. Have your orders ready to take some profits off the table at 200. If you're a beginner trader, if you're in this trade, you could take it off at 200 because that's a substantial level of support. We need one more low here. We have the 220. Pretty much the trade is on autopilot right now. All right, let it go, 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 go. All right. We have 215. I'm literally hands off. You guys can see I have my order in at 200 to take partial profits. And when we get there, we're going to be lowering the stop. So all I do is I drag my stop lower. Joe, yeah, me too. Like I'm I'm not 
messing around with this market. This is cray cray. Five points, guys. Five. That's it. One point. Have those orders. Have those orders ready. All right. I'm half out. We're going to be reducing our stops right now. Uh, in fact, reduce that stop to break even. Stop to break even. Now we have a risk-free trade, everybody. Next target, 180. This is going to be a doozy. It, we need to stay below the 200. We need to stay below the 200. If we don't stay below 200, price is going to reverse. That's why we're lowering our stop. We want to chunk in all that profit, okay? And this is what it's all about. All right. We have the 80s. You could take a quarter off at 80. If you're trading with one contract, your hands are tied. You can't do anything, okay? Your hands are tied. Uh, all you could do is put your stop at break even, okay? All right. When second target has been achieved, this is the moment of truth. This is the feared level of 170, 170 to 180. This is critical. Let's see if we break down below it. Uh, I used to think we're swim as a broker. Okay, we're getting 69. We need to see, we need to stay below um, 56. We need to stay below 56. Stay in the game. The rest we're going to be trailing. This is going to be the fun part. The next target is 150. The next target is 150. I'm not going to take profits at 150. FYI, I'm not going to take partial profits at 150. I'm going to be trailing, okay? All right, I'm lowering my stop to 230. Lowering my stop to 230. Trail, 230. We're into that 80 zone. Oh my goodness, this is cray cray. Okay, this is crazy. Let me just hit these on auto here. They're going to slide. All right. On my, I am on my active trader on my screen right now. This is a... Uh, like I said, it's support. I'm going to show you where I'm getting that support from. There we go. This is the support. And we need it to stay under that 56 or so. So under this pivot low in order to slide lower. All right. So that's where I got it from. All right. 200. We're going to get some pops here. Uh, I'm trailing the last lot at 230. All right. Last lot trail, 230. We have a risk-free trade. In fact, lower the stop 10 points below our entry. Our entry is 240. I lowered my stop to 230. Took partial profits at 180 and 200. I'm a happy camper. Now, moment of truth. We have about eight minutes left. If the price goes below 160, we go down, all right? We go down. But the most important thing is to hold the stop into the 230 and then punch lower. We're getting some pretty strong reversals off of that pivot from yesterday's trading session. Donna, your charts are so different, 35273. I don't know. I can't help you with that. Call your broker. All right. Moment of truth into the 200 right now. We're getting some selling pressure. We just topped on the one minute into the 10 EMA. This is the 212, 215-ish zone. Let's see. All right. We're getting a little bit of rotational action here. Let's see. See, everybody's taking profits here, right? We just want to make sure that we're protected on our last lot so we have a good average out. 
And that's how you work the trade out. You're giving yourself a little bit of wiggle room with your last lot. Okay. Oh, by the way, guys, if you, for example, are trading with only one contract, which you shouldn't. Okay. Um, Yeah, uh, you should be taking at least target two, right? Target one is the easiest target to achieve. Target two is, uh, uh, target two as well is, um, let's say so-and-so and target three is a maybe, always. Target three is a maybe. We're still getting weakening, uh, weaker price action. Come on, stay below 200. We want to stay below 200. Let me put this on the two minute here. All right, let's go. Our stop is holding so far. Come on, let's do it. See our stop was into the 230. This is where our stop is. It's coinciding with the trend uh, uh, with this uh, 10 EMA in the trend. We still have that two minute sell. Let's see here. We're still holding. You know what? Lower your stop to 220. Lower stop to 220. So trail 220. Okay. My quotes are not delayed. I have two platforms that I'm running. I also have a software. I just checked my prices are. Uh, whenever somebody's, you know, telling me that, you know, the prices are weird, I'm like freaking out because I'm in trades. Okay. So no, I checked three platforms, all three, same prices. So call your broker. If you're trading on a simulated account, yes, you're going to have delayed data. Okay. Let's get this baby under 60. Let's get this baby under 60. Trailing is the name of the game. Okay. All right, guys. This is looking good. Squeezing those profits out. Loving, 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 loving. All right. We have a 57, but we need to stay below 60, not jump around to 68. We have targets in 150, 100. By trailing, whatever the market gives us, right? We have room for lower. Uh, 120, 120. 120 is coming from the support guys right here. You guys see it? Okay. I'm looking at my active trader. So in case you, I'm not looking here. And so I have the uh, six charts that you guys see right here and I have my active trader here. So, all right, we're below 50. And it uh, just FYI, guys, if throughout, I don't know if we're going to be in the trade that long, but if we should happen to, uh, let me just erase this. If we should happen to uh, break literally below that 100, throughout the trading session, the next support zone is 860. Tom, yeah, did you? Cool. 
That's smart. <laughs> the market is going to be a total roller coaster until Thursday. Thursday, we have the CPI numbers, and that's when things are uh, get into, like, say, like into balance or something. All right. Now we want to stay below. See, remember, we wanted to stay below 160. Now we, we need it under 150. And we're going to choose, we're going to see if we could get some other tighter trails. Let's trail, guys, 180. Let's trail 180. I know it's tight. It's from the one minute. I don't see see the reaction off of this 10 EMA. All right. See the reaction off of this 10 EMA. Yeah. So this is the place. All right. All right. I'm out. I'm out. Out. Oh, this was good, guys. <laughs> This was good. By the way, it could still go lower, but I wanted to protect my, I wanted to protect myself. I didn't want to give it back to 220. There was an area here based on the five minute. Here's what I'm saying. By the way, it's 10 o'clock. We have news and we have a possible rotation. It's reversal time. Ding, 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 ding. It's reversal time. So uh, this would be the time to really tighten up your, your stops. Yes, it's reversal time. Yeah, good job, everybody. All right. All right, so it was a 50 point trade. Okay, 50 points, we made 50 points. Close to an R. Why am? See, this is a bottoming tail, this is signaling buying. There's some buying happening here. There's some buying happening in NASDAQ. Uh, let's take a look at oil here. See oil on the 4H, if it takes out the 8120, it could possibly head on a little bit higher. The 30 minute has a sandwich. It has a little bit of resistance into the 81. I'm typically very hesitant on calling uh, trades in, um, especially in oil, because it's so volatile. That's awesome. Uh, hey, Keisha, how much is that? Uh, 50 points in the Dow. Each point is five bucks. Uh, so we made 250 bucks per contract in what? 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 250 bucks per contract. I kind of like a Daniel over 81. Uh, it has room. See, there's this um, a, a trigger at 81.20 from the four hour that can take it to uh, 81.40. Looks pretty good. Exactly, Daniel. Exactly. Uh, this, when it gets to 81.20, it's probably going to blast off to an, for another 20 points into the 81.40. All right. So let's talk about the market context right now and see where we're at. So all of these indices have pretty much achieved some support zones. Uh, the Dow got very close, as you guys can see. Uh, to the support zone and to the 35, 120, okay? Uh, and it's kind of like, look what, look what it's doing. And that's because it's 10 o'clock, right? It's 10 o'clock, reversal time. 
So what I'm seeing here is that, well, this is still in a limbo. The 15 minutes still uh, looks like it wants to go a little bit lower, but the five minute here, this could be like a, let's say like a short squeeze, like a reversal uh, type of trade, counter trend, counter trade. If it takes out 205, uh, I'm just talking about it out loud. I'm, I'm not calling the trade. Um, here it is. So if it takes out this high, here's the here's the part that I don't like. I don't like the stop to be placed below this pivot here because it gives us a super asymmetric trade. But if you're not worried about that, uh, you position size. If it takes out the 205, it's going to go to 230. 230. That would be like the target. So you have this, uh, you have this space here that you can juggle with. So if it takes out the 205, I'm not going to take it, but Here's, this is the trade. This is going to be a squeeze, okay? This is going to be a squeeze. Okay, guys, what platform are you guys using? Rob, what platform? Donna, what platform are you guys using? I'm using Think or Swim. Both my think swim platforms are showing the same prices. No, no, not you guys. Those of you guys that are, uh, those of you guys that are, uh, have different numbers on you. Okay. Juan, are you having problems? Are you guys using the September contract? If, okay, here's the thing. If you guys are using a simulated account, yes, it's going to have a delay, not unless you call your broker and say, hey, put me on real-time data or fund it. And they're going to automatically put you on real-time data. Okay. So if your platform is lagging, if it doesn't have real time, it's because you're in demo, you're in a simulated account. Okay. Call them, tell them that you want to uh, see how their platform is performing so they would enable, and if they don't want, you need to fund that account, okay? Uh, hey, Rob, I have no idea what those platforms are. Trade for Kent. Yeah, I've, I, I've never traded on that. Yeah, I don't know. Make sure, again, make sure you guys that all indices are under the September contract. That is the U23. That U23, letter U23. There you go. Hey, Steve. Um, if you fund the account, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You can still, good point. All right, guys, let's see here what's going on. All right, no other trades. I don't know. I think, are we done? Are we done? Um, we're trading again, you know, we're having the same thing that we had in the uh, at the open. So we're still trading into this mumbo jumbo type of type of thing. Yeah, so <laughs> exactly, exactly, especially on a day. Good point, Steve. Don't you mad? Okay, okay. Uh... No, it's not enough. Like I truly recommend, like if you don't have at least five to seven thousand dollars, don't even think about it because you're gonna blow that money so fast. It's not gonna let you trade properly. You have option. You have other options. You can uh, trade a fund, a, a funded account, a prop account. So don't waste your money. It's not enough. Not for this market. I'm trying to be super honest with you guys. 
All right. So we're having a, a you know a whole lot of chop. What do you guys want to talk about now? Yes, Brent, you got it. Possible. Eden, you got it. Awesome. Thanks so much. Guys, don't forget to enable everyone, Eden, so everybody can see where you were typing. Uh, just go with uh, from where you were typing, go to the drop down and select everyone. All right. Uh, what do you guys think? Because the market is so junky right now. What do you guys think? Do you guys want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, charting, um, what I use, you know, the uh, indicators that I use, uh, what I look specifically for price action? That's, I love that question, Yvonne. What was the strategy used for going into YM? Okay. All right, so I'm going to share a different screen. Let me see if I could share a different screen right here. No, you know what? I could do it right here. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, off the open, I've noticed that uh, we have been go. Uh, we, we actually had a down reaction. And remember earlier, I was telling you guys that I look for uh, specific uh, patterns that are uh, into, um, yes, keep those questions coming guys. No, not distracting. At all. <laughs> just kidding. All right. No, ju just keep, uh, just keep posting your questions. Okay. So I look at chunks of price action with timing. So from nine 30 to nine 30 to nine 45, that's the first 15 minutes. Usually the, uh, the, um, let's say, the most active part of trading is within the first 30 minutes. That's where I specialize in. I love to see uh, and I love to find trades that are happening in the first 30 minutes. And typically, you know, on a day like today, we would have that trade in and out the door and we would enjoy the rest of the day, right? Uh, because right now the price action is very iffy. It doesn't, at this moment in time, like, I don't know after five minutes, but at this moment in time, it's not showing us like, um, real yes of course I, I will explain it uh godwin of course uh, i'll explain everything like i said i'm not going anywhere okay so basically this was a from 10 a from 9 30 all the way into the 9 45 right so it's the first chunk right it's the first chunk uh of course i look into equities i'm gonna explain everything i'm gonna explain everything behind the scenes i promise you guys okay so here we go. We oh, we're gonna get probably another leg down, and we have a sandwich down here. Anyways, back to the question. I get easily distracted when I'm seeing action into the market. So to answer your questions, Yvonne, this was a breakdown at two hundred forty dollars with confirmation. I wanted to make sure that we really break these lows, which are two forty five. Wanted to take them a little bit below, so the price action has you know uh, has can prove to us that it takes out that it can take out those lows and continue lower and i use these tops for the stop right here so i give it a little bit of room above the ma's for the stop i didn't want to choose these tops because they were so, so close but i wanted to choose just the 300 so we have plenty of room i don't like to use tight stops with tight stops you get like a lot of stop outs uh and uh definitely especially in the morning morning is fleecing time especially in the first 30 minutes i like to keep my stops a little bit wider uh because i go for bigger targets if you want to have tight stops you go for very small tiny targets and if you were using wider stops then you you have pretty much wider targets all right so again like i was saying so ivana i hope i answered that question for you in terms of technicals, I use a bunch of uh, moving averages. Uh, moving averages are a great indicator of either trend continuation or trend rejection. And it, they become so obvious because they're telling whether they want to follow something to the downside or follow something to the upside. So they're pretty much like, I call them like trend setters, if you will. So earlier I was mentioning that on the one minute, right? On the one minute when we trailed out, right? On the one minute, uh, I said that, hey, from the open, we got out. Here's where we got in, right? Into the 240. This is where our entry candle was into the 240. 
all right? We're on a break of this chunky action just below the pivot. And uh, you can see here that I was watching. So I'm watching old time frames. I'm going to share the other screen with you guys in just a few moments to have an idea of how I watch uh, a trade before I get in. But definitely, this is something that I definitely look at, these moving averages. Once the price trades below the moving average, it's getting selling pressure. And once it starts trading above the moving average, it's getting a little bit of buying pressure. And if you combine that with the timing in the market, the one that I was telling you, the first 15 minutes, then the first 30 minutes, and then pretty much now we're trading as though it's uh, 10, I have a clock there. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, 10 15. So at this time, the price action is getting ready for the next decision, which is pretty much going, going to come in in the next few minutes uh, to 10 or 10 30. This is the decision time for the prime time trigger time into the market. This is the last time that pretty much setups for my session are going to happen. So if there is something that is going to happen, this, this is the time when it's going to happen within this. Uh, let's say 15 minutes from 10 15 to 10 30 and then if the trade let's say it's not triggering into the 10 30 that would be like the last opportunity for the trade uh the momentum is slowing down and you're going to see that trades that develop later in the day later in the morning 10 30 10 40 10 45 have lower odds of succeeding to targets and they're definitely going to be a lot slower. So for example, if you're seeing a trade that is developing into 11 o'clock or 11.15 where the momentum door is shutting, uh, the strong momentum for me, for the market, for my style of trading dims down once 11 o'clock hits and it's just getting slower and boring. And you're going to risk like if you take trades and if you initiate trades around 11 o'clock, you have a, you pretty much have a strong chance of sitting in those trades for a long time and that means for the afternoon trading session and in that case you need to adjust your stop uh to a much higher uh to a much higher time frame so much higher time frame i mean like the 15 minute or the 30 minute uh and allow yourself to play stops along those time frames because if you are going to select stops on the one and the two minute, you're just going to get stopped out of trades. Okay. All right. So let's take a quick look and see uh, uh, what we have right now in the market. And then uh, we are going to answer a whole bunch of other questions. Made a little bit of money today. But now we're trading on these support levels. These support levels are um, uh, based on uh, price support and resistance from multiple time frames. I will take you to the other screen and explain how I made my selection criteria. And I see why I'm falling off the cliff here, by the way, from a daily structure, because we are, uh, here we go. So remember when I was telling you guys that I like to look at patterns uh, that break support and form setups below that support level, because that shows me that the price action is weakening and it has way better chances of moving down. All right. So again, the moving averages that I use, I'm going to type them here in the room are the 20, the 50 and the 200 simple moving averages. And I use the 10 exponential moving average, and that's the 10 EMA. These are all the moving averages that are used. Uh, I also use the dotted lines, which are pivot, pivot points. These are pivot, pivot. All right, these are pivot points that you guys see here, uh, these dotted lines, okay? Uh, and we had a little lecture last week about pivot points. There's so much to discuss about them. We actually teach how to accurately use them in our course, but to have like a crash course on them, there are seven pivot points that are uh, traced every single day by your platform. You don't have to do anything. In fact, I don't do any work except interpret price action and evaluate where the levels, uh, le uh, evaluate where the price is according to the levels. Uh, but there are seven, seven uh, pivot points. There's one in the middle, which is the dotted line you guys can see here, which is the median pivot. This is the most neutral part of the uh, of the 
chart for the intraday session. Uh, it is the it is the uh, Switzerland of of price. OK, so when the price is there, uh, it means that and especially if the overnight is hanging into this dotted line, it means that it doesn't have any kind of bias. So it's not going to move up. It's not going to move down. It's being kept there. Once it escapes a little bit above this dotted line, then it's getting a little bit more bullish. So it's very easy for beginner traders to start evaluating a little bit the market based on moving averages and based on these pivots uh, early on. So they don't take counter trend trades and so on and so forth. Doji Man is already uh, you know, I love that emoji. It's already looking for the reversal time, which is 1030, which is the prime time trigger time. And we may see some bottoming tail. So we're going to go back here on the five minute because I'm pretty sure everybody's looking for some short squeezes right now. And here we go. Let's zoom in because this is going to be fun. All right. It's still a little bit early for that. Okay. All right. So uh, going on with uh, with our pivots. So the yellow dotted line is the neutral part. And we have three that are uh, resistance levels. And we have also three to the downside that are support levels. And uh, there's going to be a reaction, to, a reaction to each of these levels. Oftentimes when, uh, for example, a price action a hits, the last level of support uh, or the last level of resistance, uh, it is called that the price is into a under uh, into an oversold area at the bottom and overbought at the top into the last uh, layers of of the resistance or support. OK. All right, everybody. So here are some potential. This is going to be interesting here because I love trading short squeezes. It's like the name of the game. Okay. All right. So this is pretty much a little bit with price action. Let me just share a different screen with you guys. Like my nose is itchy. Like, I don't know why. But anyway, so let me share this screen with you guys. Uh, this is my uh, this is my trading screen. So for example, if I want to take a trade, uh, I look at the screen right here that you guys see right now. So this screen is so important because this screen is going to show me um, multiple time frames. That's for one. And it's going to show me different setups that may happen on different levels, on different time frames. And it's, it's showing me the macro level and the micro level at the same time. So I have eight charts. Okay. And uh, at this, uh, um, uh, on the screen, I have the monthly chart, the weekly chart, the daily chart, the hourly chart, 15-minute chart, 5-minute chart, 2-minute chart, and 1-minute chart. Uh, these charts right here, you guys see that I have some gaps, okay? I do not use pre-market data. I have a system that uses both pre-market data and uh, charts that do not use pre-market data, just use the New York trading session data alone. That's it. So I, I, I'm not having like any any other clutter uh, that comes from the overnight trading session. I already have that on the other side where I uh, trace my uh, trace my levels, right? All right, so uh, bottom line is that when I look for a trade, I look at these smaller time frames. Oops, sorry. Okay, so I look at these smaller time frames right here and I look for setups, okay? So you can see here, for example, that, okay, I need to adjust this because I go in back and forth. So these go out of range very quickly because if I want to see where an indicator is or where the price is at. All right. So this is what I like uh, to see. So uh, I'm evaluating where the price is at according to the moving averages, to the pivots and to the patterns that are forming. So uh, for example, here, there was another breakdown that happened right under 140. Potential stop could have been 200. Okay. So this happened at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock reversal time. This is very tricky time to take trades, especially for something that has been down for so long. You're waiting for, uh, for some kind of reversal at this point. Oftentimes they take it like a leg down before they reverse it. 
So um, this is what we want to watch here for. So I'm interested right now into the close of the 1030 candle, which is this one right here. Uh, this is going to bring me a little bit more confirmation whether we're going further down or we're going to move uh, towards a reversal and a pullback back up. So, for example, all these charts are linked. And, for example, if I want to look at uh, NASDAQ, I just hit NASDAQ and I have all the time frames uh, right here. OK, so now I can see that NASDAQ is the one index that has about six minutes left into it right here that has the greatest potential for a rotation. And you can see here that it could squeeze really hard to about 350, right? This this could be like a pretty good trade, by the way. Yeah, this could be like a good trade. It's already trying to rotate on the five, but the five minute is coming into a lot of resistance here. So ultimately, I want that 280 area dissolved before we actually move higher. So I'm waiting for the 15 minute, especially that at this time, around this time, around 1030, I like to focus more on the five minute and on to the 15 minute rather than the one minute and the two minute. The trade that we initiated this morning was based on a setup that developed on a one minute and the two minute, and that was a, a breakdown, a little a breakdown. So the strategy that I used was a breakdown pattern on the one minute into a break of support, and we placed our stops into resistance, and we went further down into the next support zone. So we'll see if this is going to happen or not. Uh, definitely a bunch of dojis that are happening right here for the last 10 minutes are suggesting that there's a lot of indecision, meaning the buyers and the sellers are meeting in the same place. So this is the doji, the buyers, the buyers are here, the sellers are here. So they're meeting in the middle. This is what this doji is all about, right? They're meeting at the negotiating table. They're trying to see, I mean, who's going to take charge of this. And typically these are pretty easy uh, price action trades that uh, can potentially occur from these uh, dojis, you could go bullish above or bearish below. Uh, now, as you guys can see, uh, on the uh, and definitely NASDAQ is trading back into support here into the 250. And that's why it's having its reaction here. And that's why it hasn't been moving for the last uh, 10 plus minutes because uh, it's hitting the support. So you can see that this kind of charting offers you, so this kind of window offers you, a, uh, offers you the possibility of, uh, and by the way, that four hour oil, Daniel, is working really great for you because it. Uh, I just have the alert pop up on the screen right now. So it means that it's going higher. All right. So this is in a nutshell what I'm looking at. Plus, this is support here in NASDAQ. Um, let me take this alert out. Okay. This is support here in NASDAQ uh, off of the uh, 50 SMA. This is support here as well. Intraday support. We have. And then again, we're building up a little bit of green. This can be a very aggressive trade, for example, if it trades over 72, 73, 72, 73, 73, more like, more like it. So if it takes out 73, it could go to 80. 80 is going to be a big question mark if it's going to trade above it or not. And if it takes out the 80, then it could go into the 300. We have a little bit of room into the 300. OK, so uh, I would more likely wait for this 15 minute to set up because that's going to bring a little bit more confirmation whether the price is going to continue or it's going to get rejected at that point. OK. All right. So I was uh, talking earlier about oil and I was telling you guys I don't really like to, uh, you know, coal oil. I like to trade it uh, sometimes, not all the time. It's very volatile. It's not really in sync with my uh, with my personality. I'm more of a conservative trader. I'm not going for the thrill uh, a lot of times. But if you're looking, if your you know style is to be a little bit more aggressive, uh, this is for you. And I was mentioning that uh, there is. Let me just adjust this. There's this rotation that is happening right here over 81. This is Daniel, where you're having a little bit of resistance. But I was telling you guys about the four hour, four hour rotation. So you got one, two, three, four down and rotation. Now remember that a lot of times the price action is not going to fall from the face of earth. Typically on the time frame that you're trading, if you see that you have three, four, five candles to the downside, after three candles, you're expecting a reversal. You see one, three down, 
you're expecting reversal. You're seeing one, two, three, four down, you're expecting reversal. So this, these things can definitely be, uh, can definitely be for, uh, you know, kind of like expected into the market, okay? All right, so let's go back to NASDAQ right here and let's go back to these charts. Boom, 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 because we're seeing already some reversal. I haven't taken anything, but here's here's the scoop, guys, with YM, okay? So you guys see here YM. I'm going to put it on my chart as well, have my active trade already in case I want to take a trade. All right, so here's the five minute, okay? Here's the five minute, okay? All right, here is the five minute. Let me show you another chart. Hold on just one second. All right. All right. Can you guys see this chart right now? Because I can't see if I'm sharing it or not. Okay, cool. All right. So you guys can see this chart. Okay. You guys see what I'm looking for? Doji, doji and up. So basically if the price trades over, uh, over this 120 line right here, it's going to squeeze where into the 150. Where am I getting the 150 from? You're going to ask from this prior low. You see that we had a slingshot lower. This is going to be the first resistance. And then this chunk of candles right here, the bottoming tails, it's going to be the second resistance, going to come with confluence from the 10 EMA. All right, from the 10 EMA. These are a little bit riskier, okay? And uh, so typically when you're doing reversal trades, uh, I don't specifically recommend you go in with a full R. I recommend you use half the size. Okay. So remember that 1% the, per trade that I was mentioning earlier that you should raise for every single trade and position size. I think you should uh, go half. Okay. These are reversal trades are a little bit trickier. Okay. Uh, typically, uh, these short squeezes do not work the first and the second time around. That's why I do recommend you use only half uh, half the size in them. They typically take one to two or even three times, uh, uh, three, th th you, you got to use three bullets in that case. All right. So I lost my, all right, here it is. All right. I'm going to get to some questions right now. All right. Okay, uh, Pierre asking, what is the piano ratio do you uh, uh, ratio do you use? Uh, you mean the risk to reward? You mean the risk to reward? Uh, okay, okay, gotcha. So let's talk about risk to reward because this is such a great question that Pierre is asking here. Typically, I'm looking for at least two or three R's uh, in a chunky, cloggy rough market environment, you're lucky to get one, but you need to have the tradable void like we had in the Dow because we had the possibility to go lower, but we locked in close to one R. Okay. So I'm looking for two or three R's and typically you need to see the tradable void when you're going down or up. You need to see the uh, room to run from your entry to the target. That needs to, that needs to be at least two to three R's because sometimes in a weak market, you're getting, for example, you're not getting the velocity to the downside. You're not getting the velocity to the upside. And uh, then um, uh, you want to make sure that you lock in at least one, one and a half or two R's. Okay. Uh, how do I use the William percent R indicator? Uh, I use this indicator specifically for um, divergence. I use it for divergence. I use it. Uh, it's not designed for uh, day trading. I don't recommend using, and I don't, and trust me, I've been trading for over 20 years. I have trained anything under the sun to change, to make my trading a lot easier. RSI, stochastics, uh, you name it, I've been using for day trading. And uh, trust me when I tell you that by the time you have that perfect RSI with the stochastic and the price and the pattern and the timing and everything else, the trade is long gone. It's gone, okay? So basically what I ditched every single indicator and my only true indicator that is not has, has not failed me for over 23 years since I've been day trading uh, is price action. That is the only true indicator that I use, okay? So it's just pure price action pattern trading, right? Candlesticks, right? 
So let's take a look at these candlesticks, right? And then I'm going to explain a little bit more about um, the William Percent R and how I use it for my swing purpose. So you can see here green candle, right? You see green candle. This is a five minute. Let's go uh, a, a bit deeper into a smaller time frame because we don't have here like a five hours to look at that. Okay. So you guys see here, this is a red candle, right? This, this candle here uh, opened and broke below the flow a little bit. So I'm going to tell you what can happen next based on pure price action. Isn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be cool? Okay. So this is a little doji. If the price is going to break above the high and the high is 35,109. So if it hits a 110, it's going to try to zip up a little bit and challenge this prior high into the 20. However, if it's going to trade below this low and this is price action 101, and if it breaks below 90, so it needs to hit an 88 or an 89, it's going to start sliding lower to 35,076 into these lows. Okay. And that's price action trading. And going back to the RSI and RSI, I mainly use it for, uh, for swing trading. I like to look at overbought and oversold conditions and also divergency. So I'm often getting oversold and overbought conditions for my intraday price action and the indicators that I use and the price action that suggest whether I'm in an overbought and or oversold zone. But at the same time, what I'm looking here is that we know that we're in an oversold, right? Because we're trading just below this uh, this 80. So there are two markings that are very important for this indicator. It's the 80, which is right here, and is the 20 that is out here. Anything that is above 20 is overbought. Anything that is below 80 is into the oversold. Now, remember, markets can stay into the overbought for a relatively long period of time. Take a look at this trend that has happened. For example, here in the Dow, it has stayed above that 20 for a relatively long period of time and you can see here that every single time so this gives you a clue of the uptrend every single time we have hit an oversold zone we bounced immediately so we found a reaction and we bounced back up so this is an area that uh is very important one of the things that i look for just like when you're reading trends is to identify highs and you can see here that we have some kind of divergency happening we have high and a lower high which may suggest the change of the guard so may suggest the change in the trend in the structure of the market Okay. All right. So uh, this is how I use uh, basically, and I use it on a macro level, more uh, uh, macro level. For example, when you're having black swan, black swan events, like in 2020, the uh, William percent R was, uh, you know, very uh, was very, very, very useful because we had days where we had 1500, uh, 1500 points down in the Dow. And we, we wanted to see like oversold and overbought conditions. And this is the indicator that I used for that in association with price action, with the trend, uh, with, the, you know, everything else that I use on my technical chart. David, seems you don't use market internals on uh, every decision, but I have been uh, and miss a lot of your entries. So, and, uh, okay, but I have been and miss a lot of entries you would take. Did you find, no, I don't. I don't use the, uh, oh, why would I use the VIX, right? So uh, here's the thing, you know, why, when you're focused on price action, you're focused on price action. Do I use the VIX? You know, I I look at the VIX. I'm not saying that I'm taking decisions based on the VIX. Uh, let's put the VIX right here uh, just for a second. And I'm uh, definitely going to go on a little bit of higher time frame. I'm going to go on the 1H. I'm going to go on the one hour. Okay. So I'm going to put the VIX futures. Okay. These are, okay, so the VIX futures decisions can be made made uh, on the daily. So a couple of days ago, I was telling you guys that, you know, the VIX were trading, and this is a daily chart. And in the trading room, I told my traders that we're basing off of the 20 SMA, and this 20 SMA is going to hold, the VIX is going to go higher, and the market is going to go lower. So that's pretty much, you know, how it works. It's a teeter-totter type, uh, um, type of balance into the market. Uh, now, the VIX are running a little bit higher, which you can expect a little bit of trajectory to the downside. Now, remember that ahead of holidays or ahead of, you know, different events that are happening, for example, the CPI numbers that are coming on Thursday, there are a lot of people and a lot of traders that are hedging. Hedging meaning you're admitting to be wrong. Okay, guys, you're admitting to yourself that I got to hedge. 
If you're in a long, for example, if you're in a long position, for example, in ES, and you go like, I've got a hedge, right? So you're a long two contracts or one R into ES, right? And you go like, oh my God, I'm so scared. I'm going to hedge. Meaning you're admitting that you may be wrong. You want to protect yourself. I understand that. I used to do that a long time ago. I don't do it anymore because now I'm involved in the market with a whole lot of more size and it wouldn't make sense. Like, what am I going to do? Use half of my account size to buy the VIX? I mean, it doesn't make any kind of sense. So basically, uh, when when you're looking at the fix, you're looking to see whether it's on support resistance and see the reaction. And I was telling you guys that ahead of holidays, ahead of like different events that are happening in the market, FOMC, CPA numbers, what have you, uh, the VIX tends to be a little bit more active because traders are putting up protection trades. But that's pretty much it. All right, so uh, I was going to show you guys what I was going to go back to the two minute chart to show you. Okay, here we go. Uh, to show you YM. All right, to show you where YM. Is. So, like I said, remember we refer to this doji. There's no crystal ball, guys, in trading. It's just pure price action. Once you once you learn how to read price action, charting, etc. There's no uh, there's no secret. Okay. So I was mentioning that if we break below this 90, meaning the 88, there's a strong chance we go into the 76. Okay. All right. I'm going to scroll up. And by the way, um, you know, uh, if you have posted a question, if it is, if it's unanswered, okay. Uh, by the way, there's a trade here happening. So I'm going to go back to the screen. All right. Uh, these are 15 minute rotations that are happening here. Throughout. All right. So if NASDAQ, they carry really wide stop. Remember, these can be traded short squeezes. These are short squeezes. So here it is over 290. I'm just putting an alert. So you guys can have the visual over 290. If we take out the 290, uh, we could start running higher. Uh, we have the 1030 in already. So that would be the confirmation. But um, okay. And uh, let's see. Unfortunately, I don't think that we can have a tighter stop than 250 just below the 250 because you can see here, you know, there's a lot of balancing that is happening. So I would advise using any other stop. So if it takes out the 290, it may start to squeeze. I'm not seeing a lot of bullish action, by the way. Okay. I'm not seeing a lot of bullish action, by the way. All right. Let's answer some more questions. So basically, you know, I hope I answered your question about the VIX and all that stuff. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see. Don't get lost in details, guys. Okay, uh, Joe, you're trying to answer a question. So there's somebody here that wants to uh, uh, wants to put in pivot points. Oh, thanks so much. You're trying to put pivot points on Think or Swim. All right, here's how you do it. Okay, here's how you do it. Let me just maximize this. So this is only for Think or Swim. All right, you go here. You see this little kind of like what it is like hourglass or whatever it is. I don't know. Okay, so you go here, you click on this, and then you type here pivot points, let just simple pivot points, pivot points. Okay, this is it. And you click on this. And then you add selected, and it's going to take you right here. And then you customize it to the colors that you want, whether you want the prices right beside them or not. Okay, so th these are my pivot points right here. So this is where you go to customize it. You have this gear. 
you click on it. And uh, so Guy, this is for you. All right. So then you customize it. This is R3, R2, R1, right? And I have them in green. You can choose whether you want to see the price bubble or not. Okay. And then, um, all right, here you go with the medium pivot. I have it yellow, so it does not really um, that visual. Uh, of, it doesn't have that much visual impact because uh, I don't want my indicators to clutter my charts, okay? And this is S1, S2, S3. These are the support zones. And you just hit OK. OK, so I hope this helps. All right, I'm going to restore itself. Here we go, guys. So if you want to take this trade, 90 is it, okay? Here it is, the trigger. I'm not going to make an official call because I'm still answering questions. Your stop still needs to be on the bottom. You're looking for a squeeze uh, very close to 310. 310 is your target. All right, can I talk a little bit about funded trader? Of course, I am going to talk about the funded trader. Let's do this in about 15 minutes or so. Uh, Keith, okay, yeah, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna give you some tips and how to do it. Of course, we're gonna talk about that. Just give me 15 minutes and I'm, I, I could put some slides up for you and we could uh, talk about it, some comparisons and stuff because I love, I was a prop trader and I'm gonna take you to a video. I'm gonna share with you a video um, that it, prop trading is amazing. It, first of all, it, it's, it's just going to enforce a lot of rules. And one of the reasons why I am so disciplined right now is because I was a prop trader before. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't need more space, Yvonne. Like, why would I do it? I, I like to see where my candle is and where the price is. What, why would I give it? I mean, it's a personal choice. All right, so uh, okay, Gordon, where'd you get ninety from Nasdaq? It's over this high. Okay, this high is eighty-eight, so I want to make sure that I get it above the candle high. That would confirm that the price is ready to take out the high and ready for uh, uh, for a new high. Okay, which in this case it did. It went all the way to 295. Now, this candle needs to take out this high. It's kind of like this. Okay, kind of like a ladder. Okay. All right. So let's see. Um, Santiago, your method is amazing. I really want to learn. Oh my gosh. It's so simple. <laughs> you can like, look, if, if it was complicated, I would not want to do it. No, when I first started trading, um, true fact, I went like, I, I had doubts whether, not whether I could do it or not, because I'm really ambitious. And I, you know, when I put my mind to it, I want to do it. But I'm like, do I really like it? I mean, do I really like it? Like, I, like, it, it was not a thing of understanding, but it's like, do I really like it? And then when I really, you know, I got my education in, I went to um, three to four companies that got their courses. So I had a good amount of information. Then I opened my account. So, okay. So I didn't open my account. I first got my education. Then I opened my account. I traded in a SIM account for about two months or so just to uh, get myself familiar with the platform, get myself familiar with price action and how it can handle price action and how it can handle the trade. And then I went live and I had my mouse. And when I put in my first trade, my mouse would go. Oh. Or it was like so scary uh, because, you know, when you quit your job, right, to go into trading, you're like, oh, you take like a deep breath and you're just diving in. Like, I'm serious. Like my hand was shaking on the mouse. My palms were like sweaty. I'm like, ooh. I don't know if I could do this. And a lot of times I was trying to simplify my trading. And uh, a lot of times I was oh, actually overcomplicating my trading because I fell that route for indicators and I bought a bunch of indicators. I had a bunch of indicators on my charts. It was just a big hot mess. Uh, my platform was very cluttered. I couldn't see price action. I was going by the signals 
And after about three months where I was making money consistently because I was going small and I was doing baby steps, all of a sudden I found myself, oh my gosh, I'm in a hole. Okay. I'm in the hole right now. What do I do now? So it was not easy. I had to ditch everything out and, um, you know, start from scratch. But I remember during those months where I was, I was literally every day in the market and I would lose money. Like you probably know the feeling because we've all been there that I would, I would go in the market and, and I remember like waking up and I was literally like, oh no, I don't want to trade anymore. So I was literally crying. I had tears in my eyes. I came to the computers like, I got to suck this up and I, 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 I got to see what the heck is going on. I got to see what's wrong. Okay. So I started dissecting uh, everything that I did. I did a little bit of uh, back analysis on my trades. Long story short. So again, you know, it takes time until you adjust. It takes a lot of time to adjust. And especially that at that time, I didn't have somebody that would sit beside me or, you know, I could connect through the internet or just, just give me some guidance of what to do. Like now it's like, you could get guidance from anywhere. Well, good, bad, <laughs> whatever, but you can get some kind of guidance. And then I went through a mentorship program and that's where everything just click, 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 click. And I, I, I just started making money consistently. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> I know the feeling, John. All right. I know, I know that feeling when you had, uh, yeah, every trade, you could take the trade in the opposite direction, you would have made money. Exactly. I, and I thought of that and I questioned myself and it's like, okay, so I want to take it long, but what if traders are taking it short, right? <laughs> and I even thought about hedging and, and futures, you could do hedging, but uh, I even thought about hedging. I was like, what if I take it in one account long and another account short? And it's like, trust me, I've been there. So probably every single question that you guys have here for me, I, you know, and if it's regard in regards to what at the start of my trading career, I flipped it. Okay. Exactly, John. It, when the market is in a chop, just stay away from the market. Just stay away from the market. And especially if you have a good, clear trade right off the open, you made some money in a choppy market environment, you know, just take your money and run. Okay. Just take your money and run. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to scroll up and see. All right. Uh, Daniel, you're right into that 200 SMA. I'm looking at the chart right here. You're right into that area. Never give money back in the afternoon. Guys, here's how the market works. It opens, it fleeces, it finds its true range. After it finds its true range, and we're going to talk more about it tomorrow and on Thursday, but after it finds its true range, it either snaps up or snaps down. And these usually happen if you're not in a trend. This happens into 10 o'clock. From 10 o'clock to 10.30, things seem to settle. And if you're not getting a trigger into 10.30 for lower or higher, meaning for longs and shorts, the price action is just going to become junky and sideways. Walk away. That's what I do. I walk away. I found that if I trade in the afternoon, I often give money back because I'm. Uh, you get tired. You're forcing some trades, okay? And that's how you lose. You make money in the morning, and if you make so, for example, now, if I would have made three hours or even or even two hours in my trade, right? If I made that in my trade, uh, I would have taken another trade, but because I made almost an R, I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk anything. Okay. So I'm not going to give any money back today. I had a good day. I'm done. Plus I got to answer some questions in here. Okay. All right, so type in here some questions. If not, uh, we have a request to talk about some prop accounts. Ah, oh my gosh, yes, we forgot to talk about this. 
Daniel, thanks for bringing it up. Do you correlate equities uh, with index futures, tech stocks with NASDAQ, oil and gas with oil, trying to determine if the futures are independent? I tie them 100%, 100, 110%. So when I look at the market, uh, when, when I look at the open, um, and basically when I evaluate the open, I look at the stocks that have reported earnings. And today we had a couple of earnings that went out, you, you know, UPS uh, that was down. We have LA Lilly that was up. Uh, so that was mixed. These were the two most, uh, let's say, uh, um, heaviest uh, stocks that may have a little bit of impact into the market. Not really, not really per se, but they impact the market a little bit. Gosh, I got so scared. So somebody out my door, it's the fertilizer guys, the lawn fertilizer guys. Was like, oh, so I was right, my, right outside my window. All right. So I like, was stocking our trading room. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah, we're going to get into account sizes as well. So there's a very strong correlation between the stock market and the futures market, especially in the New York trading session. Uh, it also has an influence uh, from the close. For example, on Thursday or on Wednesday, I believe it's a Wednesday after the market closes, I, I believe it's a Wednesday, Disney is going to report. It's one of the last major companies in the Dow that is going to report earnings. The earnings that are coming out are going to be, they're going to impact the Dow, okay? So when we meet Thursday morning, and actually we're going to talk about it tomorrow, when we meet Thursday morning, uh, we're going to probably be uh, taking a look at the Dow and we're going to start, um, you know, um, analyzing the Dow and we may pretty much have trades in the Dow because the impact of the stock is going to be pretty heavy into the Dow. But I want to take you to a different screen right now. All right. So this is this is the Nasdaq screen. And I'm really glad, really, really glad, <laughs> really glad that you guys brought it up. Daniel, thank you for bringing it up because it has really a high impact on my trading. And this is something that I correlate my trading with. Uh, and it helps with my decision criteria. Okay. All right. So first of all, take let's take a look at this screen right here. Okay. So we're going to take a look at this screen right here. All right, so what we see here is definitely we have Apple, we have Microsoft, we have Amazon, we have Tesla, we have semiconductors, we have Costco. These are some of the major, uh, these are some of the major NASDAQ stocks. For example, if Apple and Amazon would have more um, positive price action, it would rotate to the upside, that would give us more certainty and that would give us a little bit more clarity on the direction of NASDAQ. Now, when you see that Amazon, and these are, by the way, these are daily charts. And when you see Amazon here that is just about to fall off the cliff, it's pretty likely going to start falling apart. And it's going to go probably to this resistance. So it's uh, it's actually situating itself into a cell setup, which is uh, not very uh, bullish for uh, if you're looking to take NASDAQ long. Uh, for example, you see, uh, uh, for example, you see Apple here with an inside bar. Now, this inside bar is telling, depending on, so if it's going to take out yesterday's lows, it will continue to go lower. But it, the stall today is pretty interesting because if we're going to close today at four o'clock and we're going to have this inside candle, this is going to be very telling because we're going to be really bearish below this 177 and we're going to be very bullish over 180 because it's gonna go for a real big short squeeze, right, to the upside. Now you're seeing the semiconductors that are trying to hold this 50 SMA, but they're having a sell pattern. We have the high and the lower high. So that means that they may start pulling lower as well. Uh, you're also seeing, for example, you know, pins, for example, like Costco is still trying to hold. It, Broadcom is trying to hold right there. So you have like a bunch of stocks that are trying to hold, but at the same time, they have bearish, uh, they have uh, these bearish setups that are uh, that are lining up, okay? So 
what is the common denominator that you guys observe here? That most of the stocks are into a pullback scenario, but they're still trading into support. Look at this 20 SMA, for example, here in Meta. Look at NVIDIA right here is trading into some, some support. Look at AVGO here is trading very close to this 50 SMA and to these prior highs. So this is support, right? So you have a lot of elements that are trading into support. Another chart that I watch, and I'm really glad that you guys brought it up here. Okay, let me share this other screen with you guys. All right, is a panel of the Dow stocks. Okay, so UNH, UNH basing, right? But it's getting a little bit weaker, but it was a little bit stronger. Then the next one is Goldman Sachs, which is trading back into support, right? This and financials yesterday were a little bit stronger. Uh, but they're still holding the range. I mean, they're not literally falling apart. Uh, we have Home Depot, which is back into support here. Uh, we have Microsoft, which is a little bit weaker. This is uh, impacting NASDAQ, but it's also impacting the Dow as well. Uh, we have McDonald's, which is range bound. And you're looking basically for relative strength or relative weakness. And if you have any kind of relative strength in, uh, if you have, if you find relative strength in at least half of these uh, stocks or at least into the major players like Boeing, UNH, Goldman Sachs, Microsoft, uh, then it's more likely that the Dow is going to hold. And basically, it will start rotating back to the upside. But you're getting a lot of uncertainty right now. Definitely, the Dow stocks are trying to hold a little bit more than NASDAQ stocks. And it's so evident that they're struggling to hold support. I think this is going to be correlated. And the price action activity that you guys see here on this screen uh, is going to be strictly correlated with the CPI numbers that are coming out on Thursday. That's going to be the big doozy, okay? All right, so let's uh, answer some more questions. Do you buy, sell on market orders? Um, yes, I put in limit orders. I don't use market orders, not unless, you know, I have a real um, fast trade, a, a scalp, for example, and then I hit the buy button. But oftentimes I just use, not often, 99.99%, I use limit orders. I know in advance where my entries are, and I know in advance where my stops are, where my targets are. And I pretty much have a an idea of how I plan on trailing uh, the trade based on prior price action that we have had through the overnight trading session. All right, uh, Kim, around 930, you said to take NASDAQ if price goes above uh, uh, above 15,382, but I'm curious to why enter there if there is resistance pivot at 50 SMA right above. All right, so I said that at uh, 930, we're going to go to a two minute chart here and we're going to go back in time. Okay. So over the highs here uh, into the 80, <clears throat> I said 82. Okay, so that would be 82. So this candle is pretty much the fleecing candle, I call it. It's the opening candle. It's the first two-minute candle. Typically, if the price takes out the two-minute high, it will go higher. And if it takes out the two-minute low, it will go lower. Oops, sorry. Thanks so much. All right. I often forget which screen I'm sharing. So, All right. So thanks for reminding me. All right, so basically the question was in regards to NASDAQ and why uh, why I said that it may be bullish over uh, over this high of 382. 382 would have come with a confirmation that the price, if above this, that two minute high would continue higher uh, as part of a reversal from the overnight selling that we had because we had a lot of selling in the overnight trading session. And uh, let's face it, right now we are like, let's see it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, NASDAQ. Okay. NASDAQ has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven hours of selling. And it's right now into support. Okay. So definitely this was my fleecing reversal strategy. Okay. So that's the reason why. So, all right. So thanks so much for that. So I answered that question. Uh, no, I don't have a result for that yet. All right. Uh, okay. 
Does your website recommend account size for trading? Okay, here's uh, here's my take on the market. There are a lot of brokers out there that suggest, hey, open an account with us. You can fund it with $500. You can start trading right away. It doesn't work like that. What they're saying is that they want your money so you can go month after month or week after week and fund $500 at a time. Uh, they live off uh, commissions. So basically, you cannot make a living. Basically, the reason why you guys are getting into day trading is to make a living, generate income, or supplement an income, right? Th this is it. You want to pull income because it's an income style of trading. You pull money out of the market every day, right? Or almost every day on an average. If you're a consistent trader, on an average, you make a little bit of money every single day. That doesn't mean that you're going to make money day in, day out, day in, day out. Because if you want to make money every single day, you get a job at Target and where you're getting a salary and get paid at the end of the month. With trading, the more you know, the more you make, okay? The better you are, the, the more money you make, okay? So experience is going to be paid and you're basically paid based on your experience in the market. If you open an account, like I said, uh, if you want to start trading futures, uh, I suggest you can open an account with seven, ten thousand dollars and you can start trading micros uh, because you can't position size for that. There's no way on planet you can start trading full size contracts, OK, because you're going to have to position size tomorrow. We're going to do a mini lecture on position sizing and I'm going to show you the trick to consistent profitability. Uh, but basically. I would say the starting point minimum minimum would be between somewhere between seven and ten thousand dollars. So uh, the less you have in your account, the less you're going to sweat it, the less you're going to, uh, you know, uh, you're not going to perform well if you're trading with a very small account. OK, and you're just going to blow it. This is not the market uh, that where you can trade with a very small account. OK, it's not. Uh, there was a time, 2005, to, uh, 2000, I'm sorry, 2015, 2016, 2017, from 2018 till now, no, you need to have, you need to have a little bit more money. That's why these, um, there are a lot of prop firms out there that offer you that opportunity. Um, <clears throat> okay, so how many micros would a $7,000 account be ideal? It's the position size. So with $7,000, you're going to be risking $70 on a trade. I'm going to explain more about that tomorrow when we do our lecture into position sizing, but your risk per trade is going to be $70. That's 1%. So you're going to be risking $70 on each and every single trade. You're going to be very selective because in this volatile environment, you're not going to have a lot of trades that you're going to be taking because the stops are pretty wide and you got to fit just the ones that fit in your $70. You're going to have to position size. So sometimes you're going to be using uh, two micros, sometimes five micros, depending on the size, the difference between the entry and the stop. Uh, Kim, do you recommend taking money out every month or quarter if you're making money? Absolutely. Absolutely. So there are two cases here. So for example, if you do not want to grow your account, like for example, I don't want to grow my account. I cannot handle a bigger account than I have. So at the end of the month, I'm pulling all my profits out. At the, the last day, the last trading day, at the end of the last trading day of the month, I'm pulling my money out. I'm putting it into my swing trading and investing account. Uh, that's what I do with the money. And of course, I pay my bills, right? Big portion, right? A big portion is uh, going towards uh, the bills, everything, purchases, whatever you want to buy. Also reward yourself, right? Uh, the other thing is that if you want to grow your account, don't take money out. Get into a desirable account size first, because that is the most important thing, because if you grow your account, you could quit your job. I mean, that is that is ideal. All right, it's easier to make money with a big account than to uh than to make money with a small account. With this, I know I've I've been there. I've traded that, and I know how it is. It's really hard to make money with a small account. And when you actually start growing your account, you go like, wow. Okay. All right. Um. All right, let's see what other questions. So yes, definitely. Uh, so for example, 
like, again, you can grow it to an account size that, um, let's say that, uh, that you, that you desire, um, that you can handle. So for example, if you have, let's say a $50,000 account, you want to grow it to a hundred or 150. So then you can start, um, uh, um, uh, pulling money out. Uh, think about this. If you have a hundred thousand dollar account, okay, your risk percent is one percent. That is a thousand dollars. So think about this, okay? How much do I want to grow my account? So how you know you, you make a list of your expenses. And you take a you know you take a notebook and you make a list of your expenses: mortgage, car, gas, groceries, whatever. Okay, and you draw the line and you say, okay, these are my bills. I have to have I don't know ten thousand dollars a month just to cover everything. Okay. Uh, just to break even. And you go like, okay, so what account do I need? So for example, if you have an $100,000 account, you're going to raise $1,000 per trade. So let's say you're making on an average, uh, you know, let's say you're making, on, let's say you're making one R, uh, let's say every three days, for example, or let's say you're making two R's per week. Uh, so that is two plus two, that's, you know, in two weeks, you have 4,000, you have 6,000, you have 8,000. So that's not enough for you. So you need to make, you need to go like 150,000, right? For 150,000, you have about $1,500. And that's why a lot of traders go to the prop account route, because you instantly have that, right? You instantly have access to that cash. And what you do is like basically your uh, your broker is giving you the money to trade and you split the profits, but you split very little, right? So think about this. What are your expenses and what account would you need taking into consideration that, you know, you need five, you know, let's say you need $10,000, okay? So if you have, let's say, I don't know, let's say you make 10 R's right? That's $10,000 on a thousand dollar, on a hundred thousand dollar account. So that covers, but if you, you have an account, you'd be growing to 150,000, right? Then you have some wiggle room and you could take some profits out of that, not only cover your expenses, but you could throw it in a swing account or in an investing account and let your money grow. Okay. And I always tell my traders and guys, if you liked, for example, like, Amazon when it was trading at two thousand dollars, what you don't like it now when it's trading at what? Like, I mean, seriously, I mean, this could be like an area uh, that you need to look into besides day trading. Uh, uh, Stephen, is there any chance uh, a possibility of sharp entry with very little floating? Not really understanding your question. I mean, without a stop or. Okay. Oh my gosh, Joe, you got it right. So yes, it depends on where you live. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It depends on where you live. You could always move to Texas. You could always move to Florida. I mean, think about it. Okay. Uh, Hamal. Okay, prop firm account 100K. You're technically just trading a 5K account, 5% of a blow up. Yeah, well, you you take it as it. You should not be risking five percent. If you're if you're risking five percent, nobody wants you to trade their uh their own money. You you need to be in those risk limits. So you need to risk a thousand dollars. Okay. So for example, when you divide what as a day trader, you need to have a little bit of ammunition. You need to have three to four trades on a regular basis that you're going to go in the market because you don't know that you're going in the market and you're going to make money right away, right? You can go in the market. So for example, today we took the Dow, okay? It could have been, it could have been a stop out, period. Could have been a stop out trade. No problem. So there's not a problem. There's a stop out. That is just one R. It's a little trade. It's a little loss in an ocean of trades, in an ocean of trades. It really doesn't count. It's one R. One R of your whole account size. That's why I'm telling you, risk 1% of your account 
on each trade because that's not going to be devastating, right? So if you're having a hundred thousand dollar account, you're going to be risking one percent, one thousand dollars. That's not significant. And then you have to have the ammunition to go into a second trade. Then you have to have the ammunition. So for example, those short squeezes that I was telling you guys about, you need to have the money to get into those short squeezes. These are very aggressive. And I think that may happen. These may happen. These are right now in the making. These short squeezes are in the making right now because we are trading into these huge bases. Let me show you. Look at the 15 minute again here. Okay, into the chart. Let's go to five minutes. Look at the five minutes. It's really struggling. You see, it did a ding lower. This is a slingshot. Washes everybody out. That's what I said. Have really wider stops. Okay, have really, really wider stops. And then it zips out. It makes sure that it takes everybody out before it launches higher. And oftentimes, like I said, you're going to get stopped out one or two times before the trade starts working. So that's why you need to use half the risk on this one. All right. Uh, of course. Okay. Okay. If you're a new trader visitor, we will have access to the recordings for the, absolutely. The recordings are going to be yours forever. I hope you find them useful. Okay. Uh, Bob, do you mean 1% of the entire account? 1% of the entire account per trade. So if you have a $100,000 account, 1% is $1,000. That is your risk per trade, meaning that you're risking on three, on three trades, you're risking 3% per day, for example, 3 to 5% per day, but not on one trade, divided into three to four to five trades. If you lose our first, uh, the 1%, the next 1% of the, you keep the same. You, yes, yes, you keep the same. Not unless your account goes really sell, which is not going to go. So if you're trading with me, it's not going to do that. Uh, unlock, yes. How many hours do you make per week uh, on day trading and how many is swing? Uh, it's not how it works. It's what the market offers you. I would like to have 20 hours per day or per week or swing trading and day trading is basically what the market is offering you. Ideally, like I said, per trade, every day is different. Uh, for example, you strive to get two hours at least out of each and every single trade, but you're going to have losses as well. So um, it's basically what the market offers you. You can't say, you know, I'm going to make 20 hours this month, or I'm going to make 20 hours, or this is an average. There's no average. Every month is different based upon the earning context, based upon the news context. Every day is different in the market. That's why trading is never boring. So Bob, if you have a $200,000 account, your risk per trade is $2,000 and you position size for that. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow. Exactly. And depending on the uh, depending on the difference between the entry and the stop, okay, then you calculate how many contracts you're going to be getting with that. Okay, let's see. I'm scrolling through questions here. And by the way, if I'm missing your question, please copy and paste it again. Um, what is the best prop account? I think all prop accounts are great. Okay, I'm going to talk. We do offer funding as well. We're going to talk about that as well. Risk is exactly, John, R is your risk amount, 1%. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So an R is your personal risk. My risk is different than your risk, than uh, Jeannie's risk, than, um, you know, David's risk. Everybody has, it because we all have different accounts, okay? And there are some traders that are trading their RRA accounts, which they're bigger, Trade according to your risk tolerance. So we have traders in the program that have $5 million accounts, okay? So what that means is that they're not going to be applying $50,000 on trade. But what they're going to be doing, especially in the beginning, uh, beginning stage of their career, 
um, of their trading career, they're going to be applying something that is in sync with their risk tolerance, right? Like $500, they're starting with $500 and then they're growing to a thousand and then they're go growing to 1500. The way you trade with hundred dollars and the way you manage a hundred dollars, the same way you manage 10,000 or a million. Okay. So learn how to trade small and then scale out. That would be my advice. <clears throat> hey, Bob, thank you. All right. Okay, let's see. Oh, she, how do you deal with prop accounts, intraday trailing, drawdown, and stops? I will tell you a secret. Use position sizing. Use that 1% and you're never going to get into that default, okay? Respect your entries, respect your stops, and make sure that you respect your R. Because if you respect your R, you're never going to be into that really bad situation. Hey, Brendan. Thank you so much. Doji man, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Now, let me take you guys. I see this uh, prop question. Um, let me see here. Okay. Hold on just a second. Okay. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, in general, prop accounts. Okay. And by the way, I know that. Um, <sighs> uh, top step is not currently uh, admitting new clients so you got to get on their wait list so we do have you know a lot of traders in our trading room that work with top step uh, I personally know them I met them at uh, in Chicago uh, at a traders expo and uh, I really like them I like their system I like the fact that they're enforcing the rules you really need to have really strict rules in order to do that uh, but let's uh, discuss, let's discuss uh, the trade all out, which is a little bit different uh, than any other uh, prop account that you guys know of. And it's just going to get a little bit better starting with Friday night. I believe we're going to get a new interface uh, from our broker. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing this screen right now. A sheet tomorrow when I explain, and we're going to do that mini lecture because this is so, I don't want to see you guys blow up accounts. And this is the only thing that is going to take, keep you from blowing up accounts. So I really feel that it's important I share this information with you about position sizing. And I am definitely going to hold the full throttle position size, uh, position size uh, thing here. Okay. So we do have funded accounts with trade. I'm providing you capital, but you need to prove that you can trade and you respect the rules, okay? So we do have funded accounts. Thank you so much for posting the link. Um, trade out loud services, funded accounts. You can find the link in the chat box right there. Okay, so here's what it's all about. This will enable you to actually trade without having your own money. And best of all, it's not going to be membership based. Uh, we have a four tier system, but if you want, we can include a million dollar account for you, but you need to prove that you can make money and we can actually switch you if you really want special requirements but this is not for real beginner traders. Uh, this is the million dollar account, okay? Million dollar account. So we have four tiers currently and one that is not advertised, but for traders that know how to trade and prove that can, they can trade, we can take you to a million dollars. We can give you a million dollar accounts to trade. You can start small and say, hey, I want to test my skills in a live market environment and see how I would be trading a $50,000 account. So we have four tiers. We have the $500,000. We have the $100,000 account. 
we have the $200,000 account and we have the 500,000 account. And again, we have that 1 million by request only. Now, with what is different about this program? This is not a membership program. So you're not going to get this. For example, you're not going to get into this program. And let's not going to access the $50,000 account and pay every month $500 or $200, $200 or $50 or whatever it is. There is no membership fee. There is only one audition fee. That's it. And that is $500 that is going to get you through the door. And all you need to do is prove that you can trade and can make money. What I need to see from your side is that you make 10% in that account. So basically, $50,000 account, you need to make $5,000. And if you make $5,000, you're automatically switched. It's going to trigger an alert into our broker, and they're going to switch you to the live funded account. So you're going to get live $50,000 to trade with. Your maximum loss limit is going to be $2,000. Now, there's a catch. See this $500 right here? I did not choose this by accident. It is 1% of the $50,000 account, meaning that, by the way, the market is starting to rip to the upside, meaning that if you are going to open a $50,000 account, your risk per trade is going to be $500. If you blow up, for trades, this is your daily maximum limit, right? That doesn't mean that you're going to be underqualified. We do have rules. We're going to provide you with all the rules. And in fact, they're on the website, okay? Okay. You can get a limited, a limited chances to pass the simulated account. But the only problem is that you have to pay the $500 if you blow it up. That's the only thing. And it really doesn't matter. We had we had one trader that blew up the two thousand dollar account like four times, and right now he grew this account because you can grow this account as well. And now he's trading. He's not pulling money out, although he can, but he grew it to like four hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, not kidding. All right. So after he blew his account so many times, so it is possible to do it because. You're balancing yourself. You're learning how to use the platform. You're learning how to use the system. You're learning how to trade. It is a discovery. Trading is a discovery and it's so, you know, personal, right? It, 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 you have to develop your own style. Like, for example, like I'm not, uh, I'm a conservative trader. I don't like to, uh, for example, take high velocity, high volatility trades. Uh, I like to be, a I have a conservative approach with, you know, I, over calculate the stops the triggers this so so i so i can make consistent money okay so here's the good news about it the maximum drawdown is $2500 and if you start making money and i'm telling you there's only but wait there's more but wait there's more the split profit for this is you get to keep 75% of the money you get to keep 75% of the Profits, 25% goes to our broker, okay? Goes to our broker. So basically what I'm doing for you guys is allowing you, opening the door to these accounts. I put some cash on the line, okay? So the broker can uh, work with, so you have access to capital. Now, if you, for example, this is the gold account, this is extremely popular, everybody wants to go uh, for this type of account. It's $100,000 access. You, you have access to $100,000. There's an audition fee of $1,000. And again, this is not renewable. Okay. You pay this and that's it. It's yours to keep forever. Okay. So unless you blow your account. So in a simulated account, your target is still 10%. Whatever account you choose, you need to make 10% and that gets you immediately, immediately to life. Okay. Now, Here's the beauty about it. How many days to trade in demo? It uh, uh, In this audition, there's no time limit. So you can pass this 
uh, uh, this audition in five days, in one day, or in two years. It doesn't matter. But be very careful because our broker has a requirement. Our broker requires you to put a trade one, uh, to put at least one trade per month. Other than that, you know, they're, they're canceling your account and your $1,000 is out the door. So no matter what option you're choosing right here, Remember that you have to put one trade per month. So it doesn't restrict you in time. You could take as long time. You could trade really tiny, small amounts until you get used to it, right? Okay. Uh, what can you trade? You can trade stocks, Apple, AMD, I don't know, Amazon, whatever, Boeing, stocks. You can trade stocks. Day trade swing trade a lot of the prop firms out there do not allow swing trading you have to be out by the end of the day not with us you can trade cryptocurrencies all from one platform you want to trade bitcoin you want to trade litecoin you want to trade dogecoin anything that you want to trade it's in this platform you want to trade futures indices futures indices they're right into this platform you want to trade metals you want to trade um, um, energy, gold and oil, it's into this platform. You want to trade Forex, it's into this platform. So even if you're a day trader and let's say you're specialized in trading stocks, maybe at one point you're curious about futures, maybe at one point you're curious about uh, Forex and it's trading in the overnight. So you can take advantage of price action movement in the overnight trading session. You don't have to, you know, just... Uh, uh, trade from nine o'clock to four o'clock. All of these contracts are CFDs. I'm going to get into CFDs in a second and show you what the difference is. Basically, there's no uh, there's no charting difference, but there's going to be a little bit of a price difference. No options. You're already trading leveraged over here. Okay. Uh, MetaTrader is very good, very strong. Yes, swing trades over the weekend. You could take swing trades over the weekend. Um, no, no options, uh, trading platform at this moment, at this moment, uh, we are using MetaTrader 5, uh, and, uh, on Friday, I will see if they have approved trading view for it. I think it can be used, but I have to ask again if we can use trading view, but I'm pretty sure they will activate the trading view. Okay. The spread is really great. You're, I'm going to show you in a second. Yeah, I'm going to show you in a second. Okay, so they're all CFDs. These are contracts for difference. Now, why do we use CFDs? Our broker is in Australia. And because this is a, this is a huge advantage because our broker is in Australia, you do not have to have, let's say, the day trading pattern uh, rule for day trading, let's say 25,000 or whatever. Uh, uh, for um, uh, for stocks. Uh, and if you're trading stocks and if you want a prop account, what is the biggest obstacle that you're going to run into? What is the biggest? Um, it's open for everybody. Everybody on the planet can trade this and open an account here. The problem, yes, and I do suggest multiple accounts. I was I'm going to get to that as well, okay? The only thing that is going to keep you from trading uh, stocks in a prop trading account is that you need to pass a series 56 exam, which is ridiculously hard to pass. Okay, so here's the path to funding. Okay, wasn't really ready for this, but here's the path to funding. First of all, you're going to head into the audition. So if you opt for the $100,000 account, which is, let's say, the most popular, you can try it with the, uh, with the $500. I mean, this is going to get you access to $50,000. Get your feet wet. It's $500, okay? So uh, if you want to take that route and say, hey, I want to get access to $50,000, pay the $500, and this is going to get you through the door into the audition phase. So basically, you choose your account size, you start trading, trade any style, day trade, swing trade, uh, trade any instrument, stocks, futures, commodities, whatever you want, uh, Forex, no minimum trading days. So you don't you're not restricted and say, hey, you need to pass the audition in five days or a month. 
you could take three months, you could take six months, things happen. Maybe you're busy, maybe you have a full time job, but you still want to trade. We understand that. So we accommodate you with, the, uh, we're gracing you with however, you know, whenever you meet your quota, whenever you meet your 10% is when you meet your 10%. Do not rush through the process. That's all I'm saying. Do not rush through the, uh, through the process. After you hit your target, so that means that you grow your demo account by 10%. So if you opted for the $50,000 account, you made $5,000. Once you have the $5,000, but keep in mind, you need to make the profit, but you're still going to have commissions on your trades, right? Like with anything out there, right? So you're going to have, so you need to make $5,000, including the commissions and stuff. Because once you get, let's say if you make, let's say $60 on a day trade, right? And then you have $10 commissions and you made $50, right? So you need to have $5,000 clean in your account without breaching the rules. These are the rules that our broker uh, established. These are not my rules, but I accommodate them. So uh, they're really good to respect. So you need to respect rules. You know, trading is all about rule-based system. Stay on course. You've got this, guys. Now you got your $5,000. Now it's time to claim your account. All right. So this is the time. Congratulations. You're getting a welcome to the funded account email. You can start trading live. All we need, uh, all we need you guys to send us at this point only is your banking information, your address, and your ID. Why do I need your banking information? And definitely this is for the broker. It's not for me. Because we need uh, we need to send your uh, we need to send your profits right. Uh, we can send your profits through various forms. I'm going to give you a link if you go to our website. There's an introductory video right there where we talk about how we send uh, profits out to you, uh, whether it's PayPal, Venmo, whatever it is. So bank transfers, whatever it is, and then. Congratulations, you're trading a funded account. You log into your funded account, you start trading your funded account, and you respect the same rules. And this is how you grow your account. Now, I want to show you a little bit of a difference here. Okay, so this is the MNE SP, and you see here that there is a price, and I could put it live for you. Um, I could do it side by side. Uh, there's a price difference because the this is the real contract, right? This is the real futures contract. It's not the CFD, okay? This is a real contract. And let's say this price is that, you see where the candle is, it's 4538, 4538. Now, this is your uh, MT5 platform. And you can see here that at the same point in time, see the skinny candle? Okay, look at here. This is the skinny candle. This is the price. Whoops, sorry. This is the skinny candle. This is the price. So there's a little slight price difference. You can see 4538. This is 45.22. It doesn't matter because you're trading because these are two basically different instruments. That's the futures contract. And this is the futures contract CFD. The pattern is the same. You can see here the price, right? 45.22. So you can see that the structure is identical. So you're basically trading the chart. You're trading price action. But if you're in my trading room and if I say, okay, buy it at, uh, uh, 4540, then that 4540 is not going to be um, your entry. But you, if I say, take it on the top of this candle high, then you know that you're going to take it on the top of your candle high. So it's fairly, uh, fairly very easy, right? It's basically pattern trading. You can see here that swing high to swing low, and then you're gradually up, pull back and back, chop, chop, back up. You can see the same pattern here from swing high to swing low. So the cha chart pattern is absolutely identical. It's just that the prices are different because they're uh, they're uh, CFDs. Now, here are the two side by side. Patterns are identical on old time frames. So you don't have to worry about you just trade the chart. You trade the chart anyway. Uh, price action defer a little bit, but trades are the same. So for example, if you're looking for a buy setup off of the 10 EMA, then you're having, you know, the buy setup off the 10 EMA. Okay. Uh, for example, this is Amazon. You can see Amazon in here, uh, 
very similar price action. In fact, I think it's identical because the, the, sometimes they go like a few points on and off, but you're basically trading the uh, chart pattern, right? So here it is. Uh, stocks advantage over the prop firms. No serious 56 exam for prop trading. This is huge, guys. This is huge. So it doesn't matter whether it's a few uh, uh, you know, cents away or not because you're trading this. You're not trading this. So you're going to be focusing your patterns on this and not on this. And then this is euro dollar for those of you that are interested in uh, futures in uh, Forex. OK, you can see the chart patterns. Look at the swing up, swing up. By the way, CFD and this is euro dollar. OK, see, this is the euro dollar CFD. This is euro dollar. And in fact, you could see here very similar prices, very, very similar prices in futures as well. OK, all right. Uh, Bitcoin, if you decide and say, hey, I want to day trade Bitcoin, you can trade it from the same platform. OK, so this is super cool. Trade Bitcoin. Uh, and again, one other thing uh, is that if you decide to opt for this and I'm going to bring it up a little bit to show you uh, if you decide to opt for this, I highly recommend like if you decide to opt for the fifty thousand dollar account, uh, Opt for the trade over the weekend. This will enable you to swing trade. So if you want to hold positions, for, for example, if you want to swing trade stocks, this is great because you can swing trade stocks here. Uh, I don't recommend double the leverage. Uh, definitely position size with your 1%. If you're new to trading, you know, just risk 0.5% on each other for single trade. And then uh, I would do recommend the stop loss not required because I find that if you don't select this, it has happened to me when I was trading a little bit and um, with the uh, uh, with this prop account at the beginning, I couldn't get my stop fast enough in, and I would just get breached immediately, and they would um, um you know the platform would uh you know send me a notification, hey you've done a breach. So I highly recommend these two trade over the weekend and stop loss not required, even though you're going to put the stop loss. OK, so if you select these two, you're adding 10 percent and 10 percent right here. Fully, fully worth it. OK, so uh, basically, you know, start trading profit split. Um, you know, you get 75 percent of the profits. Uh, 25 percent gets to our broker. Uh, no reset fees. No, you just have to pay the five hundred dollars to um, uh, to get back in again. Uh, think about this, Gord. What if you pay, for example, $150 and you're in that program for six months, right? So that adds up, right? So if you're thinking that, oh my gosh, I'm getting in the 500 and I'm blowing up the account, you're not going to make it. I mean, think about of ways of how you can stay into the game because this depend, th this is, you know, depending whether we're going to fund you or not. So if you think that you're going to blow that account in a week, then you shouldn't be trading anyways. I mean, nobody's, I mean, trade your own funds because I definitely don't want to, you know, see someone that is going to blow my money out, okay? So uh, when you're trading, like I said, with $50,000, trade below the uh, trade trade 1% or even trade below the 1R risk, which is 0.5%, okay? So instead of risking $500 on a trade, Start small at $250, especially if you're not yet a consistent uh, consistent trader. Okay, so uh, yes, with other, like I said, 99.99% .99 of all the other prop firms do not allow you to swing trade, okay? I think it's a huge disadvantage. Plus, I don't know, does Apex or Top Stuff allow you to trade stocks? Do they allow you to trade futures? Do they, uh, uh, not futures, Forex, do they allow you to trade uh, to trade uh, Bitcoin from all from one platform? No, you're not going to find this anywhere, okay? All right, so let's, uh, let me share one more screen with you guys. I'm going to get here. Okay, so this was a little bit in a nutshell. Exactly. Uh, how many times you give $100 for uh, the broker just once because you stay in the game the broker basically handles everything on that side the broker handles everything on his side okay so let me share with you something here yes malaysian uh malaysian residents can participate uh the taxes is basically 1099 
Uh, and I want to show you something. Just give me one second here. All right. So if you go right here, all right, if you go to my website, exactly, you need to prove how to trade in a SIM account and then you get fully funded. Okay, then you get fully funded. So when you start, don't think, oh my God, I'm going to blow up the account. I mean, if you think about it, <clears throat> right off the bat, you pay that $500 one time fee. It's one time. You could take three months or five years to get into the life account. Just don't rush through the process. You rush, that's not gonna be good. All right, so uh, if you go to my website, I don't know, oh, you can't see it. Oh, you can see it. Okay, you can see it. You go to under services, you go under funder, funded accounts, okay? And you scroll down, you have all the explanations here. You have the funded accounts. Uh, this is our broker eight cap. You have the trading rules right here. By the way, this is a massive broker, okay? And I'm very thankful that everybody here with this program can trade stocks without a Series 56. Hello? You can trade stocks without a Series 56. Have you ever wanted to trade stocks? Okay, you need a series 56. You can't pass that, it's so hard. Okay, you, be, you really need to be an experienced trader in order to do that. So anyways, here are the trading rules, okay? And you have to go through them. I wasn't planning on talking about this today, but anyways, uh, so uh, countries accepted, you get all these countries accept, all countries uh, excluding OFAC listed companies. There are some weird countries, whatever. Um, okay, what products can I trade? You can click here and it's going to take you to a list of products that you can trade. Uh, these are just okay. So, if you want to, if you're interested, just in uh, let's say in stocks, okay, stocks, okay, these are the stocks that you can trade. Here it is in alphabetical order, and you have pages and pages and pages and pages. And just, look, Amazon, Adobe, Apple. Cisco, Facebook, this is Meta, they're still rebranding it, uh, Intel, Microsoft, et cetera, okay? You could trade anything, anything, okay, from here. You could go to the website and see all that list, all right? And of course, you have all the rules, all right? Funded account rules, general questions, if you have any other question, how are taxes handled, okay? So when trading a funded account, for a firm, you are treated as an independent contractor. As a result, you're responsible for any and all the taxes on your uh, on your side, right? But you're going to receive a 1099 from us, and that's pretty much it. Okay, then you record. What's most interesting is that view this video on funded accounts. I hosted this last year. I think it was like a year ago. Okay, all right. So here it is. Click this video, watch it. It's about an hour long. It's going to teach you a little bit about, um, you know, funded accounts, and it's going to get you in detail with what we have to begin the discussion today. And here, if you decide to really opt in and get familiar with the platform, this is the platform orientation. Like I said, I think TradingView is coming where I think you can still use it, uh, but I have to ask. But anyways, this is the platform orientation, finding your way around the MT5 platform. All right. So this is a little bit about our funded accounts. It has all the bells and whistles, and it has huge advantages compared to the other platforms. And that's why we are uh, different. All right. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. No, there's no other Scott. Uh, Scott is asking like if you um if you sign up before the audition fee, is there another fee for life? No. That is that is the one-time fee. That's going to get you access to the capital period. 
is the best thing out there. I'm telling you guys. Like, I wish I had a program like this when I first started trading. Unfortunately, not. It was a totally different situation when I got into a prop account. And that's how I grew my account to have a, uh, uh, to have a really good day trading account. And then I went on my own. But uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, no, no think or swim. No think or swim. All right. Okay, so this is pretty much, guys, in a nutshell, uh, what I have planned uh, for today. I'll, as you guys can see, we're going to get back into the market a little bit and discuss the uh, market conditions right now and see where we're at. Um, and let's take a quick look. All right, so we're going to get 15 minutes throughout. Okay, so we could compare apples to apples, right? All right. So what do we have in the market right now? Well, first of all, we opened the day and we were heading towards the support zones. We nailed YM short for about 50 points and we made some money on it. And then the markets continued to be choppy. And I said, I really don't want to short below these uh, support zones because they're likely to hold. They're trading into uh, minor support areas and they're likely to bounce or slop around, especially that we have been in sell mode for the last seven hours, right? So we haven't had any upticks. Uh, so definitely uh, we discussed some short squeeze possibilities into these indices. And you can see here that we have a 15 minute rotation and up. It took a little bit of time, but this would be the decision time. And why is this the decision time? Because we've noticed that it has a huge reaction off of the 10 exponential moving average. And it kind of curls around, it curls da back down from this 10 exponential moving average. So at this point, this is the decision uh, time for uh, YM because it's right into the 10 exponential moving average. So what this means is that it filled the gap of air, okay? So at this point, this can be the line of the sand. It's gonna be bullish if we have a close of a 15 minute candle above, and if it, rotates and if it executes a 15 minute sell it's going to enter a sell pattern and it's going to continue lower and most likely going to revisit the prior load that we already have into the 35076 now the mini &E SP same thing it has been down for quite a few hours uh we have the support we have a double band of support the first support level we have into the 90s and the second we have into the 85s and you can see here that it's balancing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it's trying to find its groove, whether it's going to go higher or lower. It, the more it just stayed into that range, you can see the uh, 10 exponential moving average sloped into the price and it's just keeping the price uh, uh, right under it. If it has a close above 93, nine, I would say 95, more than 93, it will start moving back up. If not, it will uh, possibly break the 80s and start moving lower even further, uh, most likely into the 72 area as a first pit stop. Um, all right. And then we have NASDAQ, which a lot of relative weakness into it. Uh, you guys can see that uh, we are uh, testing the support and we're balancing into support. We came into support, we stole into support, and now we're just uh, Christmas light effect into support. We see the green, we see the red, we see back a little bit of green, we see bottoming tail. So it's definitely going to uh, try to hold that support. So now don't forget that the London session has already closed. This is just the New York trading session. The New York trading session is often, uh, you know, uh, I would say uh, I would say it tries to reverse the prices, doesn't accelerate it as much to the downside. It's going to try to save a little bit of the price action, but it all depends on the stocks and how they're performing. And uh, like I said, I think that the big chunk of selling has already occurred. We took a portion, a little bit of portion uh, into our day trade today. And I think that, you know, for the rest of the day, we're going to continue to chop around. I, I assume that tomorrow we're going to have pretty much the same thing, uh, a, a similar uh, trading pattern than what we had today. And this is going to remain a pattern as we're going into the CPI numbers. Be ready for CPI numbers because on the CPI numbers, log in earlier because we may have alerts as soon as 9.05 or 9.10, uh, this is going to be a unique case when we have these CPI numbers out. And then Russell, 
you can see that it came back into support, test of support right here, and it's just uh, creating a lot of bottoming tails. That's a sign that, you know, uh, buyers are lifting the price of the candle a little bit higher. And uh, we can potentially see a little bit of a short squeeze as well. Uh, as I was mentioning in oil earlier, Danielle, I'm really glad that you took the advice and took this uh, as a four hour rotation over 20, of 81.25. Uh, I said that it has room to run into the 81.40 uh, for about 20 cents. And at this point, if it broke and it did break that point, it had room into the 70s. And you could see here a little bit of flurry, a little bit of profit taking, but it had really good action. Gold continues to chop around. So uh all right so one last question rod how does this compare to other prop accounts well other prop accounts do not allow you to trade stocks other prop accounts do not allow you to swing trade <laughs> uh altogether for that matter uh these are two fantastic humongous differences between our prop accounts and other prop accounts that are out there so thanks so much for joining everybody i'm looking forward to seeing you guys back in here tomorrow at nine o'clock sharp as we're navigating the market going into the cpi numbers that are pretty much going to shape the market as we're going even into next week so thank you everybody i wish you guys have a good rest uh, of the day uh, we made money today, and that makes me very happy. I will see you guys tomorrow, same place, same time. Enjoy the rest of the day, everybody. A recordings are going to go out at the end of the three days. So thanks so much, everybody. See you tomorrow.